Are you more of a paper book or digital book person? Maybe you're like me and have a ton of paper books but are more often working with digital sources. Well, whether you love working with paper books or are full out paperless, there will be a time when you need to take notes from a paper book and want those notes in your digital system. It's uh, totally digital. Or maybe you just want paper, paper. Paper, just paper all the way, yeah. It can be a pain working with paper books if you can't integrate the notes with all of your other notes and work in your digital system if you don't have workflows in place. In this video, I'll take you through three easy ways to get notes from a physical paper book into digital form. Now these workflows will let you keep or borrow your physical paper books while taking advantage of the power of digital note systems so you can study, work through ideas, move that writing project forward, or have the notes easily available so you can use them when you need them. I'll be using Obsidian, a smartphone and a laptop, but the approaches and workflow will be similar with other apps. With these approaches, you don't have to choose between paper books and paper notes, and digital books and digital notes, you can have it all. All right, let's get into it. For our first approach, we're going to read our print book with all of its paper glory and take notes digitally. Now you can take notes with a tablet and digital stylus. I know a lot of people love that approach with apps like GoodNotes and Notability and make those notes look really fantastic. I'm going to focus here on typing notes with a keyboard. I used to do this much more often than I do now, but I would get one of these book holders. I could just stick it somewhere on my desk and put the book in here, keep the pages open with these tabs and type my notes. And often this meant typing entire passages or paraphrasing. But since I do like to have those original sources and to be able to have the citations be able to go directly right back to the original, I like to have the full quotes. I'll put some links in the description. If you don't have any of these, I find them really useful. But that's one approach. The other approach, which I find myself using more, which would be reading excerpts from the book aloud using some kind of dictation. The way that I approach this is I have, um, I have my book marked up. So I've already read this chapter and I have my typical annotations in here. And so now I'm just kind of making some choices over how much of this do I actually really want to have the full um, original quotes in here and how much is it okay to paraphrase. I'm gonna take this passage here and I have on the side, um, I have it marked that I like this passage, I want to do something with it. And then I also wrote music learning problems. Or, now that I know I want to record this passage, I'm going to use my phone, and I have an iPhone here. I could use any number of apps that have a dictation option, which there are many on the iPhone. I typically use Drafts and Obsidian, and I'm going to start with Drafts. Sometimes when I know that I'm going to be taking notes from a book, I have all of my dictations occur in the same file and just makes it easier for transferring over. So that's what I'm gonna do here. When there are no clear and present problems to find, they go out and find them embedded in the intricacy of everyday life. By problems, we do not mean only things problematic, but also opportunities for working on the questions, puzzles, and enigmas that are inherent in human existence. Now, the other thing is you'll see here that it doesn't get the, it didn't get the commas right now. Now, I can dictate commas, it's just that that's a little bit of a pain. I mean, I could do that now and you'll see what that's like. So you can see like, I still have to do some editing and imagine if I go through a whole chapter here, it could be kind of clunky. Obsidian also has a dictation option here, just like drafts. I mean, it's doing it mostly accurately. So what I could do is I could go through the whole chapter, then work on editing all of this. So this is the second option where I can read from the book, use dictation, but it's this third option that I tend to use the most. This, what this app lets me do is scan a piece of the page, just the passage that I want, and then OCR it, and then put it into another app, in this case, Drafts or Obsidian, which I find to be a more efficient process. So let's try this out. So the app called Prismo Go. All right, so here we are. And you can see my markings here. Doing the OCR and I just want the part where when there are no clear. So what I might do in this case is go into drafts, put the whole thing in there. So once you have your book annotated, you can go through with your scanning app, in this case Prismo Go, and just start scanning all the passages that you want in your digital note taking system. If you want annotations, you can just take pictures of them and apps like Obsidian let you just grab those photos and put them right in the context of the notes that you're taking. So 
you have all that information from your paper book right in your digital system. And then I'm gonna have another video about how I process all of this. So just look for that in the Obsidian playlist. So I hope that you got something out of this and that I'd love to hear your perspectives. So until next time, have a good one and I'll see you around. Hey everyone, I'm Evan Tobias. I'm on the music learning and teaching faculty at Arizona State University and I support music educators of all kinds. Imagine possibilities for music learning and teaching and then make those possibilities a reality. So when I moved to more of a standing desk model, this became more difficult to use because there's nothing really on my desk and this fits on really well. Now, for the first year of the pandemic when I was doing almost all my work at home, my solution to this, and I had asked some people, what's your solution to this? But my solution was to take um, a microphone stand, yep, and to stick it right on top of my desk and to put one of these gator shelves. I'll put a link to that below because um, you might need this solution also at some point. Uh, but I had a, a microphone stand with a gator shelf on it, like a vice grip, and um, I put this on the shelf, and it actually worked really great. I could put it right next to the monitor. It was the, the perfect height. But then I found after a while that, that you know having a microphone stand with a big shelf on it in the middle of your desk is not the best situation. It got in the way a lot, especially when I was moving things around.